Hi, good afternoon. Joe here at Woolly Cottage and it's my second instalment of um, Art Yarn series. So the last video that we did um, was using an art, spa, art bat and core spinning it onto a yarn. And then I plied it back onto uh, the same yarn um, to create coils. Okay, so this week through a request somebody left me feedback which I love it when people leave me feedback on my chats. I really appreciative. Um, any comments or suggestions you have things you want me to film in the future, please just drop them down below because they just got my book and then I can sit and plan and think about how um, I could put the, the tutorial together or if it's a technique I've never done before or I just want a bit of time practicing before I do it as a video then it's always brilliant to do that. So anyway one request was is it possible to do art yarn spinning using swatches of fabric, scrap fabrics, ribbons, lace, that sort of thing. Yes you can add anything to your yarn. So pardon me what I'm going to be doing is using a roving just a plain undyed roving I'm using today. So I'm just going to pull myself out some. I'm not going to use a bat, I'm just going to use a roving. This was pencil actually. Um, I'll see if I can take out... Oh, you can never find the ends on these things, can you? Um, where are we at? Where are we at? Is that... I think that'll do for now. That's more than enough for what I want to do. I can always add a little bit more if I need it. Okay. So I was going to do a dyed yarn. At dye roving, but sometimes when dye roving you or for is blended, the only ones I had available that weren't used weren't going to be used for the listings, um, all had blends inside them, and I've just sometimes it's just easier to use a natural one when you're practicing just getting started because there's no it's not been through the, the dye stock solution, it hasn't gone through the hot water, it hasn't been dried. Um, and it's just natural and sometimes they're the nicest ones, especially if you want to put them on the website and sell them from the macrame weavers. So I've got, I have got my um, Freya Krumsky wheel out today and oh, I've got threaded and through the wrong side. And I'm going to show you how I spin up and there's, there's a lot of us out there on YouTube that do them and we've all got our own little ways of doing them, but essentially it's all the same we just explain it differently okay so i have got these textured ribbons you've got some with tassels on them some with mohair and i've actually wrapped round one into there as well some strands of wool in there what else have i got i've got some fluffy stuff mohair over there as well yarns that are like these okay um, and then I've got some lilac tassely stuff. So I wanted it to be neutral, so I might not use the purple one later on. And I am going to spin it in a thick and thin. Now you can do this as a single yarn, and everyone knows that most of you all know how to spin a, a really good single yarn. And if you want to create something that's really arty, um, with texturing like a shawl with lots of lacy work bits, like crocheting um, work where there's lots of gaps in it so you can use a quite textured yarn in there um, and same principle when you come to finishing it later is to how I do mine and a couple of others do as well we cold wash it first and then put it into a hot water to create that felt in that semi felt in friction with the yarn so that's what I'm going to do today. I will point you down and you can see how I go and I will explain what it is that I'm doing as I go along. I will reposition you at certain points so you can see from different angles what I'm doing with my hand. Okay? So I'm just going to get started on here and I'm just going to do the occasional thick and thin sections. So when you're doing this, you want to try and make sure you've got plenty of twist in that thick section. There we go, and then just some thin ones, just pull it out as usual, all the way down, get some extra twist in that, and a bit more, and I want some thicker pieces, thicker pieces, and thicker pieces, there you go, and some thicker pieces, right. Now I'm going to add in 
some ribbon okay so there's different ways you can do this so essentially you want to catch that end into your roving so what you want to do is split open in the middle thread your textured yarn or your lace or whatever it is you want to do so you've got a little piece out here sticking out okay and you want to keep it on the outside so the right side of your roving so if my roving was sat over my hand that'd be sat like that okay and by doing this you're actually allowing the um the ribbon or the texture the textured item that you're using or the lace or whatever or thread it will sit on the top of the roving okay so i want to make sure that stays above here on that side we just let that keep coming down okay so i'm coming to the end of that but what i want to do next is trap this end into here now i will do it this way so like i did at the start i split the roving into two sections and i'm just going to thread that through there so it catches in but i've also taken off this section because i want that to capture onto the roving again so i'll do that again and i will bring you over a bit closer so you can see what i'm doing i might even put you on this side because it's a lot easier to see so i will do it again with this okay so get your piece there split your roving in the middle grab it with your fingers and pull it through okay so you've got one on one side and the longer piece hold it down the bottom between your fingers in there so it stays with your roving and then let it dangle it should follow me down okay and because the yarn's up this top end i now want to just get my second piece and just trap those fibers in there and they are secure they're not going anywhere i want some thick and thin sections again literally just keep on going like that add a little bit of something else in there so I've got this gold can you see that with the little squares on there so if you weren't doing it by putting the thread through the middle of it I just wrap it around so get your end wrap it around and just pinch it with my fingers then i take this piece off here start spinning and i would use that to lock in that ribbon there and make sure it's still on the outside as i'm spinning drag it down a little bit just so i can make it come a bit further down on my yarn on my singles and then again make sure that's in place rip this piece off spin away and trap that fiber in like that like you were just joining on a piece of roving anyway hold on a second let me just push this up a bit nearly lost that then it's getting tangled up in my fibers over here I don't want that don't want it to get tangled 
Right, so I'm going to add another piece of lacy stuff. Well, it's tassels. Okay, so once again, I'm going to push it through the hole I've just made here. Grab it with my fingers and pull it through. I'm just going to wrap it around ever so gently and then feed. you can feed it back through that hole if you want to because it's already in there so it comes out the other side. Okay, so you've created essentially a knot. I want to make sure that this fibre is on the right side of the roving and I want this to come down further on my roving and then I'm going to stop it there, pull that back and thread that into place, rejoin the roving in to the art yarn. just keep doing that I think I'll stop it there okay so I'll just untwist this okay so you can see me from a different angle now so this time I have got this lacy yarn scrap from some sort of art yarns so this one I'm gonna pull off my section okay just gently wrap that around there I've got a tassel sticking out the end of here okay and then I'm going to get this the piece I've just yanked off and I'm going to reattach it like I would do if I was spinning anyway and it will trap in that fiber and I'm just going to let that run all the way down here pull this section off again and use that to trap in those fibers i use this style when i'm adding locks to rovings that's how i add in my my locks into rovings i just find it so much easier right let's see if we can find something else so i'm gonna go with this mohair Boucle, where we go, mohair boucle, and some of that square ribbon as well. I've just wrapped them around together, so I've ended up with two. So this time I'm going to split in there, add in my yarn or my fabric or the, whatever it is that you've got, and I'm just going to twist it around and then go back in through that same hole and come out the other side, okay. You can leave it to dangle if you want. You don't have to tie it up if you don't want to. <coughs> and then spin away as I would. Make sure that this is following me down. I mean, you can have it all gathering up if you want to. I mean, it's not a problem. Let it just do its own thing. All the way down there. And then yank this off and let that will catch that in place and then join it back on at the bottom. I just want some nice thick pieces again. I'm just gonna get some more roving. Got some strays. Trying to run off. Where are we at? Where are we at? I can take that off there. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing again. Just trying to oh, thread me back in, push my guides down, join that back on. I'm going to add in. Now you can get your ribbon and just tie a knot in there. There you go, that isn't going anywhere. And another one just to be on the safe side. Okay, 
and then just spin away till it comes down. Right, I've just snapped this off here. I'm just waiting for this to catch up now. And then I'm going to add that, let these fibres on the wool catch on the end of that ribbon and then back to creating a thick and thin yarn. A little bit of extra twist in there than what I'd normally do. And then add in something else. So what shall I go with this time? Shall I add a bit more of, I've got this multicoloured one again, so I'll go with that one. This time I'm going to use the fibre to tie it in place. So if I just make sure it's on the right side of the roving so it doesn't get caught up. And use the wool from the roving to catch it. And leave that on there. There we go. I'm just going to pull a piece off and then I'm going to catch that again and that's locked in place use this time some of this um, lovely tassel yarn so I'm gonna do the through the whole section so I'm gonna pull that through there and pull it back through itself hold that in place leave that to dangle and I want some quite chunky sections. Oh, next. And then just catch that. Another bit chunky there. All the way down. And something else. What should we go with this time? Shall I go another piece of that ribbon one? This ribbon this is is it slightly different or is it the same as the other one it's the same as the other one i was using so it's got these holes and bits and pieces in there so i am going to unravel this piece with a big loop in it and put that through okay so i've just made a, a hole in the middle i'm gonna let that dangle out I'll leave that on the right side and then just let that wrap around and then make another hole in the roving like that and then put this piece through there tug this off and just capture it and it's locked in place it's going nowhere okay And then another piece, which another piece of tassel. Oh, what have we got here? Oh, a bumpy one. So I've got two pieces here, and I might actually just put them together. So two pieces together. Wrap them around. Hold on to that. I'm just gonna I'm gonna yank this piece off. Got that pinched in my fingers like that make sure it's on the right side of the roving and just capture that in there there we go now i'm going to down the end now and i'm going to capture that again just like you're joining on a piece of roving to to spinning that's all you're doing and you're just using the roving ends to lock that fiber in place again so what have I got here? I've got some lovely silky wools. So I'm gonna just tie them into a knot with one hand. There's a bow there. And then do the exact same thing all over again. So just like that. Bit of a bit more twist in that. 
cat's got the sneezes. Okay, I'm going to add in a bit more roving. And just join that on there. I'm going to stop it there and I'm going to add some, I've got a nice long piece. Oh, I've got a couple of pieces of that one there. So I've got this ribbon and it's got loads of little loops and bits in it. So I'm going to again create a hole through the middle of my roving, pull it around, wrap it around and then put it back through the same hole on the roving again and then just pinch it in place and then just let this dangle and loop. I don't think it'll go very far so I'm just going to snap that there and then again Okay. So there you go, that is thick and thin single yarn plied with ribbons. Now I'm not going to leave it like that, I am now going to do a um, second ply on that and coil spin it, okay? So then you'll be able to see the effect of all the ribbons um, and if that's what you want to do then you can carry on and do that or you can leave it as a singles and steam set it. But when you're doing the chunkier sections 
and you do want to just give that an extra twist to keep it in, in place and just make sure that your yarns and your fibers are always well attached and just create little holes like you've seen me doing I did the close-up then so you can see actually what it was that I was doing um, sorry my hands are wobbling like mad and um, see exactly what it was that I was doing to get them to lock into place as I say that's in principle the exact same idea of what I do when I'm adding locks into my yarns as well okay so now I'm gonna use the um, Tweedy glitter wool that I used last time but you're not gonna see it anyway and it's a nice fluffy wool and it has got a stretch to it and that's what you want to find when you've got a wool that you want to do coarse spinning with or plying with on art yarns you want something that's got a bit of a, a spring in it and it doesn't snap straight away um, it doesn't matter what direction this wheel's going in, it's nice and it's fine and um, because of that stretch that's in this wheel, just that slight bit of gift, it'll allow for any type of extra twist that's going to go into the plying of it, no matter what direction, hold on a minute, it's dropped, no matter what direction it is in, okay, whether you're spinning in the S or the Z, it makes no difference at all, I mean to be fair with manufactured yarns, you can't really tell that much let me just try and see and figure out which direction it's going in it is this is just a single ply yarn anyway or two ply but it's like fingering weight and i would say that it creates energy as i spin it or twist it in the z direction which is the clockwise direction it loosens if i twist it in the s direction which is anti-clockwise and uh, somebody picked me up on that the other day I've been, to be fair, I have fibromyalgia and um, I do get my, not, I get, do get my Z's and my S's mixed up and there is a partial reason to this because I do do inkle weaving and when I'm laying out the cards there's an S and a Z direction and the Z direction goes that direction out the cards so it goes in through the front to the back and on the S direction, it goes in from the back into the front when you're threading them up. So there is a reason why I got my S's and Z's back to front. But the Z direction is clockwise and the S direction is anti-clockwise. Okay, I'll do a little thing on this next week <laughs> and I've, I've corrected myself. But um, yeah, hey ho. Self-taught, most of the self-taught. I have been mentioning Z and S's for ages, and I'm sure I was I always said it in the right way, but then my memory is a nightmare when it comes to um recollection. I have to remind myself of these things quite often. <laughs> but I have been inkle weaving a lot lately, and it was mentioned on a video not long ago, and I was picked up in it the other day. So, yeah, I went and did my research and gone and looked through my books again. I went, Joe, you numpty. The reason why you're doing it is because you've been weaving on the inkle loom again. So, yeah, there we go. I do apologise. I have corrected myself. Oh, right, sorry. I've just given you the palm of my hand. Right. Didn't mean to be so aggressive. So, I've just threaded that through. I'm just going to grab my now newly spun singles and thread that through there. And I need to spin in the Z direction because I don't want it too tight though. And then wrap it on a right angle. So it's just sitting above my finger. And I don't want to see any of the wool underneath this. And I have to remind myself not to spin up so quickly. Always the same when I'm spinning on the treadle and the double treadle on the Freya on Freya. She does like me to sort of run while I'm spinning. So I'm just going to take my time and you will see these ribbons appear in a momento. Just keep that. So I want my, my, I want my yarn going straight down in my hand and I'm literally just guiding it with my thumb and forefinger. And you've seen me do this before. So now I'm coming to some really loose pieces. And then there's the ribbon starting to catch up. I need to just pull that a little bit because it's not wanting. Well, it's got stuck somewhere. There we go. Let me just try and loosen that 
off now because I've ended up with too much energy in this section, which is no good. I'm trying to push that energy all the way back down my roving because that'll be no good when it comes to putting it on the nitty noddy in a bit. I'm just having a bit of a farty moment. Bear with me a minute, guys. Just push that up because I don't want to see any of this. And there we go. And there we go. Back to normal. Right. Why doesn't he want to go on? There you go. He's got. He keeps getting stuck. Can't be doing. Some lumpy pieces going on here. Right. There's another piece of the ribbon. He's getting trapped again. All right. I'm just trying to get that to sit nice. And again. Push that through. Here's another section with some ribbon on there. that through just let that catch up and let that energy go through the bottom of that not treadle too fast so look at that I'll just pull that back a bit and you can see look isn't that smart And just keep it right angle on this side your finger and your thumb holding and guiding that yarn that's just going straight down and it's literally see that there I'm not even holding on to it it's just dangling out the bottom of my hand so there's another piece with some textured ribbon in there make sure I can't see any of the black thread underneath go and it's just a matter of um, just watching what you're doing and making sure that you keep those coils just sitting perfectly under each other well that looks really pretty that bit there we go You don't need to treadle too fast at all. Just take your time. A little bit of concentration. Enjoy the, the different textures that are going to start popping up from section to section. You don't have to use ribbons. You can go and cut yourself up some old swatches of fabric or something like that. Or neck curtains if you've got any old ones. Um, silks, old scarves bits and pieces you find in the charity shop Look at that. Um, and you can use rags all sorts of things and just add them in there we go this piece of um, ribbon popping through now you can coil that in try and concentrate and make sure it's all done properly there we go so I'm going to get on with spinning this I will move you a bit closer so you can see what it looks like as I'm doing it That's not one to go through, so I end up overcoiling 
areas I'll try and just use up this energy to do this massive piece here come on energy in that bit of yarn there. Yes, just like you guys, I struggle with my wheel too. Sometimes you just have to feed it on until you get past that point of no return. There you go, one art yarn spun with coils and ribbons and art yarns from manufacturers. 
I get one second, I'm just trying to undo this. I get my art yarn. So obviously it's not this steam set. But I'm just trying to take this off the fear. Really, Joe? You're such an idiot. Right, so you can get a better look at these sections. It needs steam set. I haven't done it yet, obviously. But you can see all the coils in there. And then you've got the ribbons wrapped around. It'll look a lot better once it's steam set. And I'll, I'll stick this on the website. Um, yeah. So there you go. One art yarn spun from a roving thick and thin yarn singles, which you can then just thread and attach in your um, textured ribbons, your scraps of fabrics, scraps of wools. Blessed place to go and find these items. Etsy. Folksy, I'm not too sure on, but definitely Etsy. I will find, I'll try and hunt out and I'll leave it in the descriptions down there. There's a little arrow um, and there's more information. Usually a link to my website and my coffee account if you want to buy me a cup of coffee. Um, sorry, you can see my toilet there. How embarrassing, Joe. Um, you can, I've got a coffee account over on, um, over there on Willy Cottage. I'm more than welcome to add towards me being able to do more of these videos because you know I am a producer and I don't always manage to sell these yarns. Sometimes I just gift them away. I mean, I have got literally loads of art yarns that have been sat on my website to sell for ages and they never sell. So I'm hoping that when August comes and I get to the Will Pop-Up show um, at Hume Hall, in Merseyside I'll be able to sell them there um, I do sometimes wonder whether maybe I should put them into multi-pack weaving sets or something like that but who knows I'll think of something one of these days so I hope you find this video useful click the like button down below it just helps the people on the platform find me and be able to access my videos I've got about 126 videos on here at the moment um, any comments and suggestions for future content please just drop a comment down below as well and hit that subscribe button i do do live chats every wednesday if i can't make it then i always leave a message on my instagram you can find me over there and i always let people know if something's popped up or i'm just not feeling very well then i won't be doing them but that's where i let the notifications go i do live chats on saturday on instagram about lunchtime um, I'm always open to suggestions of future content that you may want me to do. Next week, I'm in the middle of filming processing of alpaca from a breeder. A friend sent me the, the fibre, um, a breeder down in Cotswolds. So I'm doing a breed study on that. I've already done the filming, I've washed it. I'm going to go and blend it and spin it up and that video will be ready for next week. And then I'll give myself a week off from doing any type of filming videos. Um, and then you'll get my live chat and then you'll see another couple of videos. So I try and do the recorded videos two or three times a month. Um, otherwise it just gets a bit much, especially as I'm doing live chats as well. So um, yeah, that's about it. If you're looking for custom orders, either for yourself or for guilds, I, ha I do do guild orders and you do get a discount for that as well. For, um, I've done it for treadles and pedals down in um, the Preston area. And I've done another one for a group through um, in Yorkshire as well. So if you're ever looking for special deals for yourselves as a group, mini bats, that sort of thing, drop me a comment, a, w, um, a message at www.willycottage.com or my email is willycottage at gmail.com. You can catch me either way. Just drop me a chat, catch me on my social media pages as well. Always welcome a little bit of extra work. Thank you very much for watching and thank you ever so much for your kind support. Bye.